Well, hey everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball, out here in my garden on this July day, and it is going to be another hot, muggy day. But in the morning here, now, it is less hot and less muggy, so I'm working in my garden. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I summer prune my grapes. I also want to show you on the way to the grapes that I have hilled my potatoes. I've given them the second hilling, the last hilling of the season. I have used a wheel hoe. This is my prototype whiz bang wheel hoe, kind of a sentimental tool because it's the first one I made. Let's take a walk. I'll show you what I got and then we'll prune some grapes. So to begin with, I have this T-post trellis span, a couple of Y holders holding up a sumac branch and uh, this is Amish paste tomatoes. They're gonna grow right up, continue to grow right up and fill that. July is the month when everything jumps up here in upstate New York. And you can see this sumac, you can see how hardy this is. Look at that, that's sumac. I put that up weeks ago and that sumac wants to grow. It's a weed tree, so that's why I cut it and used it. These Amish paste are looking good. We've had a lot of wet weather. I'm concerned about blight, but when you train your uh, tomatoes up on a on a trellis span like that and keep the bottom leaves trimmed. I may have to go and uh, do a little more trimming there, but for the most part they're trimmed. If you do that, you can sometimes beat the blight or beat it to some degree. Here you can see the potatoes. This is the uh, hill planting method. I put four potatoes to a hill four foot apart. I've got a whole playlist on my channel about planting potatoes like this. I did it last year for the first time. I was very satisfied with the results. There we are, there's the grapes. Planted these many years ago and I planted them eight foot apart between those T posts. I did not have a whiz bang grape trellis uh, fittings back then, which I did. These are held up with uh, wood and wire uh, along the tops. At this time of year, these grapes just go all over the place. That so you can see all these um, branches, I guess we'll call them vines, that are extending out well past the, uh, the, the trellis. And I'm gonna just go down and cut them out. It took me some years to figure out how to prune these, you know, in the, in the winter. And uh, I had some failures. I had one year I pruned them so close that I didn't get any grapes. I was able to do better the next year. These are just a tangle. And my neighbor down the road took the uh, Cornell Viticulture program and uh, learned about growing grapes. And he said to me, you can cut and hack those grapes away. They are essentially a weed. They grow like a weed you know, under the, you know, the right conditions. And we certainly have the right conditions here. Don't be afraid to cut away all that excess. So the energy of the plant will then hopefully go more into making berries. And there's some nice berries forming right in there. Well, I'm no expert at pruning, not even close, but I know what has worked for me. And something that has worked for me very well are the Felco number no. eight pruners that you see right here. I bought a bunch of uh, other pruners over the years, over the decades, and all of them were eventually, and some very soon, disappointing. These Felcos I've had for a few years now, maybe five, and they have not been disappointing. These, you know, you invest in these, they last a lifetime. I have a video that shows how to uh, clean them up and sharpen them with uh, bits of wet, dry, fine grit sandpaper. And I've done that this morning before coming out here, you know, just a couple minutes and these are ready to roll. My objective here is just to cut away all this new growth that is overhanging. And I'm, uh, there's no grapes growing on this growth. This is growth, these shoots, these vines that will uh, put out grapes next year, but I don't need them. Okay, I'm not gonna cut off any grapes. And if I see grapes growing, I'm gonna give a foot or so there. And uh, yeah, so I'm just getting rid of this excess. You might make a mistake. You might cut and say, oh gee, I shouldn't have cut that. But uh, you know, it's very forgiving. I'm just going to go down through. I'm not going to show you the whole process. Uh, that would be pretty boring. I'll come up here, get some of these, and you'll notice that I'm just throwing them on my lawn, which is what I always do. And I leave them there. I don't rake them up. I mow over them. A couple mowings and, uh, and they're gone. So anything hanging down to the ground here, I'm going to cut, 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 cut. All right. Yeah, you got the idea. I'll uh, keep going, but I'll speed it up some here.
All right, well, that's probably more than far enough for you to get the idea. Just cutting out the excess, and that's going to make it better. It's not a necessity. I didn't used to do this. I have done it the last few years, though, and I, I like it better. The, the grapes look better. It's not hard to do. You can see I've got a, a, a sapling here, good size, inch and a half, two inch. I've got a Y holder on my T-post and that works quite well. So I'll be going down the other side after I finish this side. And yeah, well, that's, that's the process. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.